Welcome back, everyone. Next up, we have Noggin Inc. It trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol NOGN and is an intelligent commerce company providing the world's leading enterprise class e-commerce technology platform for brand leaders that need to deliver superior growth with predictable costs and an exceptional online experience. Today, the COO and CFO of Noggin will be joining us, Shariar Ramadi. Now, prior to his role there, he was COO of Rugs USA, a leading home decor e-commerce business that grew significantly during his tenure. Prior to Rugs USA, Shariar was managing director and head of portfolio operations at Comvest Partners, a mid-market private equity firm focused on operational value creation. And prior to Comvest, Shariar spent five years at the Gores Group in both London and Los Angeles, where he held a senior role in the technology, media, and telecommunications group on both continents and served in C-level capacities within portfolio companies as well. And prior to the Gores Group, Shariar was a member of the operations team at Graham Partners, a U.S. private equity firm. Shariar has led companies in over 10 industries in the U.S. and in Europe, specializing in turnarounds, carve-outs, buy and build strategies, and organic growth investments. And in each of those businesses, he was responsible for focusing on the core strategy, ensuring scalability in the platform across all functions and using digital tools to drive speed and improved outcomes. His background has enabled him to identify, connect and optimize aspects of functional groups within businesses. And his decision to join Noggin was motivated by the opportunity he identified in serving businesses with many of the challenges he encountered in his career, leveraging tools and capabilities that rapidly unlock value for customers across industries. So let's welcome Shariar Ramadi. Welcome, Shariar. Thanks, Anna. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Great. And thank you for the introduction. Take it away, sir. So, uh, with that, let's uh, let's get going. So, uh, great to uh, to be here with everybody. Uh, we have a few slides with some uh, forward-looking statement language, but uh, I'll uh, go ahead and dive into the meat of the uh, presentation here, which starts on slide five here, and is uh, it is it's it's basically starting off with why not, right? And you know why noggin is a a really important question to to answer because there are many solutions to the uh, goals of achieving presence and uh, and, and growth uh, in e-commerce and uh, and what we found and what many others have found is that the gap between uh, being online and being competitive and successful online, particularly at scale, um, is, a, is, is a gap that's become increasingly challenging and expensive uh, for companies to, to cross. And that the, the gap itself is, is growing uh, quickly. It's not, it's not static. And uh, that the larger scale players um, are compounding their investments in technology and human capital to continue to make the gap between where smaller companies are and where those top companies are uh, more and more challenging to to bridge, and and the the ability to bridge that gap um, often depends on the execution of uh, technology related capabilities or human capital related capabilities that have just uh, you know become almost cost prohibitive to achieve within the tools that are out there today. And when we look at the, um, the right side of this slide and think about the alternatives uh, to Noggin, because there certainly are several, um, the issues that one comes into contact with are, are cost, uh, where implementation can run anywhere between a few hundred thousand and a couple million dollars, um, time, and, uh, and, and also you know, an often not well understood um, element of complexity and cost, which is management distraction and opportunity cost, where the uh, desire for an organization to execute e-commerce often comes into conflict with the way that it's fundamentally set up in terms of its systems, in terms of its capabilities. Uh, and by the time those are all realized, 
and they're downfield on the effort, uh, they they typically encounter un, unpleasant, um, unexpected consequences of those dynamics. And so fundamentally, you know, with companies that are anywhere between, uh, call it, you know, five to 10 million in e-commerce revenues, all the way up to uh, 50 to $100 million of e-commerce revenues, the uh, the growth that they experience or that they desire to experience comes with increasing marginal complexity and cost. All the while, the people who are leading those categories are going further and further ahead, leveraging their advantages to increase the gap. And and here, you know, the the effective antidote, uh, if you will, to the uh, condition. Uh, that I just described is one where we have a vertically integrated technology stack that companies can migrate onto and get the benefit of in full. And that technology stack doesn't just include the typical elements of what allows uh, a company to operate online. It benefits advanced research and development that we leverage into that platform and continue to build into that platform, which effectively future-proofs it. And not just future-proofs it, from a scalability uh, perspective of the software itself, but future proofs it from a capability perspective where advanced analytics, uh, algorithmic uh, events, uh, customer segmentation, um, you know, just to name a few, uh, are built in and don't have to be developed and deployed by the customer. They're done on their behalf, testing and learning what works across a number of different brands and industries and then our customers get the benefit of that R&D uh, as a part of what we do. We don't have any upfront replatforming cost. And for anybody who's ever gone through uh, a replatforming, I think it's pretty challenging to find one who said they had a good experience. Um, the efficiency with which we conduct it and the lack of uh, capital cost to execute it uh, is a significant differentiator between Noggin and virtually anybody else in the space. Um, the ability to go live uh, you know, quickly within six to eight weeks, uh, that's sort of the, the, the fat part of the bell curve, if you will. There are some cases in which it happens faster, uh, and there are certainly good cases for the uh, instances in which it happens uh, in a little bit more time. And, and by that, to put sort of um, quantum around it, think about more like 12 weeks or potentially 16 weeks being the the outer edge, the, the thin part of that bell curve. And there are very good reasons for that, that um, depending on the complexity of the, the business, uh, it makes sense to, you know, and, and the level of resources that they have, <clears throat> make sure that they are taken on a journey with us, uh, not simply have our work done to them. Simple and easy to use. I think one of the things that we pride ourselves on is making complexity accessible. I think that if, um, a company said, it would be great if I ran a brick and mortar store and I saw somebody come in in a tailored suit with an expensive watch. Um, I would love to be able to suddenly take all the things that are on clearance uh, or close out and make them disappear, put them in the back as fast as possible, get all the new uh, stuff that's at full price out because that person's probably more in the shopping mood for that type of thing. Well, in e-commerce, obviously you can't do that in a physical store uh, you know, without, uh, without having 30 folks standing around. Um, the, the beautiful part about what we're able to execute from an e-commerce perspective is the segmentation and analysis of those customers, determinations of behaviors uh, that we can then dynamically optimize the experience around. And, and, and the example I gave is should be reasonably intuitive, um, but the actual technical execution of that um, is, is anything but. And the ability to make uh, effectively the easy button or the outcome button uh, pressable and have uh, a significant amount of um, analytical horsepower executed behind the scenes uh, is, a, is a pretty dramatic um, leap forward uh, versus what any 20, 30, $40 million dollar uh, e-commerce business would typically have accessible to them. And absolutely, uh, you know, uh, a huge leap relative to uh, the other alternative, which would be significant investments in development and, and systems integration costs. 
And then the last point about here is just the benefit of having uh, a, a SaaS product, which is that you know our, our platform, whether our clients decide that they'd prefer us to run it for them and execute all aspects of e-commerce on their behalf, uh, or whether they would like to leverage the only the software and have their teams run their store on our software, they receive the uh, the updates and uh, and development uh, going forward. And and we don't have a um, model today where we uh, suggest that you buy the platform and then you pay extra uh, for a number of other modules or additions. Um, there's no uh, gotcha in the sales process where um, we turn around and say, well, that would, that's great, right? But, but that's extra. Uh, that doesn't happen. Um, and so, um, you know, there's, a, there's, there's pretty significant today value and there's pretty dramatic uh, tomorrow value in the way that we go about filling that gap for our customers. You know, I think here, just to recap on some of those points, uh, you know, the flexibility that we offer and the speed that we bring to customers is pretty unparalleled. The ability to take a company that today operates in one segment, perhaps adds products, categories, or even acquires new businesses to put under one umbrella, and to be able to bring those products to the e-commerce store within a matter of, of weeks, uh, single digit, low single digit weeks, um, is, is otherwise uh, inaccessible. And, and not just to simply load products into a catalog, but to make sure that the clusters of customers, their preferences, the um, extent to which there are promotions offered, uh, pricing analytics, navigation elements for the, uh, for the site search, um, and all of those other elements are immediately extended out to those additional products and categories. The, um, you know, the, the other element that I mentioned, you know, here around complexity reduction is, is important to, to comprehend. And I, I think anybody who's run a business, um, uh, you know, could, could appreciate the elements of operational risk, capital risk, and, and human capital risk, I'll call it financial capital and human capital risk around, um, around you know, business in general, uh, but particularly when we think about e-commerce and, you know, if you're a if you're a business that happens to be outside of one of, one of half a dozen major um, clusters uh, of uh, of talent attraction, um, it's not going to be an easy endeavor. Um, and not just hiring, but keeping those people um, is going to be a challenge. Um, sure, there's a lot of remote um, uh, capability and options out there that that can be accessed. But when you're trying to build something from scratch. Uh, uh, or you're trying to transform something, uh, such as your e-commerce presence, the tight integration amongst the team that's doing the work is pretty critical, uh, whereas the, the later management perhaps is something easier to handle remotely. From an investment risk perspective, we take that off the table because your first, uh, your first check from Noggin, if you will, your first wire transfer uh, is, um, is purely as marginal revenue uh, that you're receiving without having spent um, a dollar of, uh, of upfront cost. And from an operational risk perspective, you don't have to change your ERP. You don't have to change your WM. You don't need a new order management system. Your warehouse doesn't have to figure out how to ship single units when it used to put pallets in trucks. Um, and furthermore, all of the divisions within your business that need to talk to one another to make e-commerce successful are, are gaps and muscles and plumbing from a communication perspective and data perspective that we solve immediately. You don't have to worry about your supply chain team um, making sure that the inventory availability of a particular product um, is, uh, is reflected in the uh, selling price that it's, that it's presently on the site for, resulting in perhaps too low of a price, uh, you know, stocking you out of, of an item that, that you'd prefer not to run out of stock on, or making sure that the products that have higher margins, i.e. connectivity with your finance team, um, are being used to perhaps drive more traffic because the marketing spend you can associate with them um, is higher because of the margins that they have. 
Uh, and, and so, you know, all of those gaps in communication, all of those gaps around uh, investment and risk um, are, are quite surgically and, and uniquely solved, um, you know, through a partnership with Noggin. And, and, and we already talked about future proofing. I won't uh, go into to more there. I think the other element around playing nicely with legacy technology is, is, uh, is, is a big deal. Um, you know, anybody who's had a systems integrator, consulting firm, et cetera, come in uh, to talk to them about e-commerce, will typically find in a few short strokes of the discussion that scope creep begins to occur. Uh, caveats start to enter the discussion um, and, uh, and contingencies start to populate their statement of work uh, around why the, uh, the, the effort might take a little bit longer, might cost a little bit more or a lot more than initially advertised when you sign the deal. And I think the final you know, thing in this section to really take away um, on this slide rather is that you're as a client never alone when Noggin's there. And that from the very beginning of articulating and conceptualizing your strategy, if it's new, or determining what the priorities are for your e-commerce business over the subsequent six, 12, 24 months, um, all the way down through how that gets cascaded into execution and subject matter expertise um, is a full end-to-end -end capability that accompanies and necessarily accompanies the technology that we deploy either on your behalf or for your team. And um, that's, that's really uh, critical in the sense that it reduces frictions for companies who would otherwise like to explore and exploit the value of a digital presence, but have a choke point or a single point of failure from a capability uh, or from a bandwidth perspective in their organizations <clears throat> that by virtue of knowing about, we can, we can solve and make up for until uh, that, um, until that, that day that, that that's no longer a bandwidth uh, issue uh, or limitation um, ends. And I think finally, you know, while we have uh, fortunately, you know, had exceptionally low historical churn um, in our customers, you know, the uh, if there is a day when our customers decide to go uh, a different path for any reason, uh, the uh, the ability to to remain with and leverage our software platform uh, remains, uh, whether or not they uh, they end up leveraging other capabilities that we have. And as in a simple example there, uh, you may have a company that gets acquired that you're working with today. And if that company is acquired by another business, that business may have a team. And that team may want to provide a lot of the services, which, which could make a lot of sense, uh, for the company that they acquired, but still use the Noggin software platform and benefit from all of the technology built into it. And so this, this element, you know, this page here is sort of <clears throat> near and dear to me because it has a lot to do with both why I joined and also uh, the challenges that I've seen uh, countless companies face when, uh, when I was in my previous career in, in private equity. And, um, and in that time period, just for context and for those who perhaps aren't as familiar with private equity, the, uh, the, the firms had majority ownership in businesses firms that I worked for, was a partner of, had majority ownership of businesses across multiple different industries, where being able to leverage and execute e-commerce would have absolutely provided another vector of value and expansion in the, in the overall uh, multiple that those businesses would ultimately or could ultimately sell for. However, and the big but was, the management distraction, opportunity cost, half a million to a million and a half dollars um, uh, and, and, and human capital risk around simply finding and keeping the right people, um, often meant that it would get pushed out in time, which ultimately translates into not happening. Um, and, and that was unfortunate, um, but a necessarily, a necessary function of the, I'll call typical way that companies, um, execute an enterprise e-commerce solution. And, and so, you know, 
a lot of folks have found their way online thanks to you know folks like Shopify, uh, who we we partner with quite closely, um, and the democratization of of sort of I'll call it um, zero to one of e-commerce is is phenomenal. And and obviously during uh, the the last few years, particularly during COVID, um, uh, a significant amount of the hesitance or risk around uh, developing an e-commerce store was was eliminated because it, in many cases it became simply existential. Um, there wasn't another way to sell, and so you built an e-commerce capability and you did your best to to, to drive that. Um, you might not have had a lot of time. You might not have done it exactly the the way you would have liked to if you had more time to do it. Um, but you got you got uh, over the fear of of wondering what the temperature was in the swimming pool um, because you 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 simply didn't have a choice. And and so that created a you know a, a large universe, um, in addition to the already massive universe of companies that Noggin can interact with and support. Um, they've typically gone through what we call sort of wave one of success, right? They went from zero to something. They've benefited from their hard work, their brand value, uh, their their relationships. Um, you know, and what they've learned or what they knew, but they've gotten to a point and that point to go past, um, requires, you know, I'll call marginal effort and complexity that that's often overpowered by, by that often overpowers the, the accompanying growth. And, and, and that can be due to a number of the variables I mentioned earlier. Um, plus one I didn't yet, which is the complexity of, stitching together a number of software elements, apps, uh, you know, uh, agencies, 3PLs, et cetera, that we'll, we'll graphically articulate a little bit later so that you understand what that can look like. And it's not just the companies that are selling, uh, you know, direct to consumer. The, the universe of, of folks that are selling B2B um, that either want a more efficient uh, consumer-like experience for their B2B transactions or um, have a significant B2B business and want to enter into a, a direct consumer uh, model uh, is another chunk of the landscape that uh, that, is, that is there to be you know leveraged and monetized to, to enable them to get where where they want to be. And that's not just from a sales perspective. It is absolutely a priority to capture additional profitable growth for those businesses in the direct consumer market. But as important and sometimes more important is the ability to gain first party customer insights for them to be able to leverage the connectivity between social behavioral dimensions, customer segments, product and feature design tests and experiments where they can get information from their clients and from their markets about what their preferences are before they invest in timely and costly, um, uh, time consuming and costly uh, R&D and development cycles. Uh, imagine if you knew what the answer to the exam question was before you, you know, sat down and, and cracked open the book. Well, that's absolutely possible with e-commerce when there's the connectivity amongst those elements. But within most businesses, unaware of the capability to do that or the methods by which to do that, they they may stumble upon it years later rather than at the very beginning. And throughout all of this, the extent that it's not clearly obvious for, for all of us here is that speed matters, opportunity cost matters, risk matters. And when you're planning the future of your business and you have a partner who can solve for those three things, it's pretty uh, compelling and somebody that you want to bring in to your business to help you grow. What is Noggin? Right. So, so if you sort of take a step back and look at the platform overall, we have a full stack enterprise platform that allows us to do things uh, that are typically broken out into multiple other systems, platforms, or apps. And one of the biggest challenges with a system that is comprised of uh, individual solutions 
while each of them can be individually very good um, if you pick the right ones um, and continue to pick the right ones because they tend to change names over time, um, is that the lack of integration amongst all of those elements, the data sharing that occurs at the very core of the platform is where an enormous amount of value is derived. And so when we have things that are going through our customer service department that are driving returns, the SKUs, the suppliers, the reasons, all of that being is being fed back in to our system. And site merchandising is being affected by that. And so, uh, and, the, and the ad campaigns that we put traffic behind to the extent that there are issues with certain segments or perhaps a new product or category launch are also affected. And so the integration of the different elements across our platform is what's really incredibly important. And whether that's marketing efficacy through our ability to, to create uh, segments for retention marketing, customer lifetime optimization, customer lifetime value optimization, whether that's for being able to get uh, the, the direct uh, uh, server connectivity that we have with, with Meta, with Google, with TikTok, with others uh, that allow us to uh, maintain a longitudinal relationship uh, with our customers for personalization um, and post-purchase communication. Um, and and you, hear, you see here in the middle of the, the, the top section of the slide, um, something called Luminate. And Luminate is effectively our, uh, if you would, um, for lack of a better description, um, uh, the, 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 the ultimate evolution of a robust Shopify theme that uh, is intentionally structured in a very um, uh, methodical way as the, 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 the plumbing um, into the rest of Noggin's systems. The, the connectivity point to the customer the structure, uh, all of the elements of hierarchy, of catalog, of the uh, utilization of the customer data platform, um, all happens through that uh, Luminate storefront, if you will. And, and while through you know, most of this conversation, we'll be talking about how Noggin you know, partners with and, and leverages and really extends uh, what Shopify does, um, the the, an important thing to keep in mind is that the work that we do is not, you know, exclusive to <clears throat> Shopify. Um, there are quite numerous examples of, uh, you know, applications like Magento, um, you know, Salesforce, um, uh, ERP-based uh, uh, e-commerce platforms such as Oracle or NetSuite um, that we have migrated onto the Noggin platform successfully and been able to execute um, on behalf of those clients as well. Here's a little bit of an example specifically into um, you know, how we leverage Shopify's capabilities. And to some extent, you can think about this uh, as, as analogous to what we do uh, or how we, how we uh, extend the, the capabilities of other uh, e-commerce platforms and software. And, and we've sort of taken dynamic content and segmentation as an example to articulate here, it's one of many that you'll see in a couple of pages. Um, but but to give you a perspective as, as to what doesn't come with um, an application like like Shopify out of the box that comes with Noggin out of the box, <clears throat> excuse me, is you know that based on past activity, we we develop personas, right? And so those personas are based on behaviors. Uh, you know, if you could identify the hyper returner, you'd love to board up the doors to keep them out. We do that. Not literally, but virtually. In the world of uh, high customer uh, value, if you could find customers that bought on promo and off promo, if you found customers who bought typically higher average order values that had more frequent repeat purchase, um, you would want to do something different. Uh, and better for those customers to optimize and maximize value. But we let you do that. And so in a world where all customers are certainly not created equal, most of how e-commerce today is executed at the size ranges <clears throat> that we articulated earlier is very much a one-size-fits-all approach um, to the behavior that's happening on site. 
Now, once we have these clusters and we understand the way that people behave, um, for people who have bought, that's great. Wouldn't it be terrific if you could tell, based on behaviors of people on site, what they were probably going to do? And we'll get to that in a minute. Now, those clusters and that data then gets imported into our CMS, our content management system, um, which is then fed into the front end for dynamic customization, um, everything from merchandising to pricing to offers, um, and the balance of that gets fed back into our data systems for, for various analytics that we perform um, that we can leverage across the board. From a roadmap perspective, there are a few things that are um, that have either happened or are happening and, uh, and are worth thinking about as you aim to really understand Noggin and what makes it different from a number of the other uh, uh, folks out there and um, that are in the, the sort of uh, uh, SMB uh, e-commerce space. And when I say SMB, I'm really talking about, call it five to $50 million dollars as a core sweet spot, but extendable up to about $100 million as well. Um, here, as you see, you know, for example, that, that in Q4, we built the, the intelligent customer segmentation uh, that we talked about earlier. And, uh, and when I say Q4, I think the uh, actual release date was September 23rd or thereabouts. And that has uh, been not just released as a beta, but is actually in production and being used on behalf of our customers and demonstrating significant lift. And then the the second step, once you have those uh, once you have those uh, segments built, is being able to dynamically offer price and personalized merchandising against those segments, which is uh, which is coming to the site here shortly and and should be released on or about the middle of February, and then towards the summer, going to uh, to a next step, and making sure that the forecasting and replenishment modeling is being done to help our customers have the product on the proverbial store shelf that the customers are coming to purchase. And this is an area that's, that's quite complex um, in any environment with, uh, with a reasonable amount of SKU complexity. And so if you're running a business that has you know, 200, 400, 500 uh, individual SKUs in half a dozen or so categories and perhaps 10 or so subcategories, the Analytics around pricing, around replenishment, around lead times, um, you know, can be pretty challenging to coordinate with the front end activity, if you will, the sales and marketing um, that's happening on site. And so in the vein of being able to provide a true uh, little pane of class, if you will, uh, solution that lets our customers execute across the commercial and operational path in one place, uh, this is a core element to doing that. Because it, it doesn't make a, a lot of sense to uh, to put dollars uh, into marketing and advertising if your product uh, isn't there. Um, and I'll and I'll kind of go through you know the the, the rest of these slides uh, just a minute of time. Um, and so this, this is a key element of the model to, to understand as well, where if you're starting on your own or you've got a business where you're thinking about going into uh, e-commerce in a, in a different way, you absolutely can. Um, the things you need to think about and the, and the appetite you have to have uh, is the, the willingness to either modify your own warehouse or engage a 3PL uh, to make sure you've got the back end and front end development talent to be able to do not just the upfront, but the ongoing the work with multiple different agencies that operate across different channels, which if they're not coordinated can result in significant sub-optimization and waste of spend uh, as those uh, groups are often compensated on the basis of uh, ad spend, not compensated on the basis of revenue. And that can lead to some pretty obvious um, unintended uh, or perhaps intended consequences. And on the right, you've got us. And so we give you the option to shed the complexity of and distraction, frankly, of all of those things on the left with a partner that has end-to-end -end capability so that you can actually focus on your core. 
How do we make money? Hey, Shari, sorry to interrupt you. I just want to make sure that we have got to transition to our next presenter. If you want to get a few more qu moments in for a question, or if you want to just give your closing remarks, what would you like? Uh, I'll go through these slides pretty quickly, and then we can, you know, if we have questions, we can, if we have time. Well, for we have about two minutes. So if you can get it done in two minutes, that'd be great. Otherwise, we got to move to our next presenter. Okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, I'll go through this, this slide that the problem matters for folks. Um, our model is basically aligned with our customer's model. Uh, as we generate value for them, we generate value for ourselves. And, uh, and, and I think uh, they, they happen primarily on the software side, um, marketing, but largely to the extent that it's productive and generating revenue uh, and fulfillment and, and shipping that we perform to save our customers money that we capture some value for as well. Uh, but all in all, I think you can see that the, the integrated dynamics around our platform are, are critical and high value. Um, and, and frankly, you know, the last point on here is important, uh, is that there's a massive market out there that we plan to embrace and, and, it's, and it's enjoying us as well. We're kind of early innings in writing our story, but um, and, and the fact that I didn't know about Noggin before I joined tells, uh, tells me that it's, uh, and, and has confirmed since, that we've been a little bit too well kept of a secret out there. Um, and we are absolutely going to change that. Well, great job. <clears throat> Our audience is really uh, invested in this as well. We've got so many questions for you, uh, but we will send them to you so you can answer on your own time. And please come back and join us. And we'd love to hear the rest of your presentation also get with that good Q&A that we often bring. So thank you so much for your time and your presentation today. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone stay with us. We'll be right back with our next presenter.